Hello everyone, in this video I'll show you how to get prepared for our control tutorial using the Flight Gear Flight Simulator. All the instructions are on this Git repository, including all the software you'll need. I'm going to work through these instructions and show you how to just make sure everything's up and working. First of all we need to install Flight Gear, so I'll open the terminal and I recommend you update everything first. So sudo apt update you'll need to put in your password lots of stuff will happen in my case everything's up to date if it wasn't you'd need to do sudo apt upgrade which in my case tells me everything's fine uh, and that will make sure your base installation is up to date next sudo apt install flight gear can be quite a big download we'll see a load of stuff go through that seems to have run all right i can check if it's working by running fgfs flight gear flight simulator up comes the default opening takes a little while to start, it's a big program as I've said. Wait for it, and here we go, sunrise in Honolulu. Don't worry, we won't have the annoying voice commands all day. And that's working as far as we expect it so far. So back to the window and kill that with a control C ready to move on to the next step. The next thing to do is to install that Git repository which includes the special stuff that I've given you for how to in interface with Flight Gear from outside. So I go back to GitHub, up to the top and copy the link and then I'm going to change to my Python directory because it is all in Python and type git clone, right click and paste and there's the, uh, that's the URL of that GitHub repository, hit enter, and down it comes. Good. If I do a quick ls, yeah, I can see there's a folder there called Control Tutorial, which is one that I just downloaded. CD to Control Tutorial. Now, the final of three things we need to download is a special aircraft model. Uh, the demo we saw a moment ago was with a, uh, a Cessna aircraft which has got this frightfully realistic button pushing um, autopilot experience and it's a pain in the neck to work with if you just want to do things programmatically. So instead we're going to use a thing called the Allegro 2000. It doesn't really matter what it is, the point is it's nice and simple. Um, if I have a look at what's in this file you'll find there's a, a script called getaircraft.sh or for shell script. So if I do source getaircraft.sh You'll see it downloaded something. This is downloading the model of the aircraft, just as a zip file. I take no credit for this. This is just from the Flight Gear website where there's lots and lots of different aircraft models. And then it's unzipped it. So again, if I do a quick directory listing, you can now see there's that big zip file in red and there's a directory in blue. Now, uh, let's check that this has worked okay. Um, Again, there's this little thing runfg.sh which runs flight gear and if I've used that download script that's already pointing to the models in the right place because it assumes I've just downloaded it from here. So again, if I run source runfg.sh Now, there's a nice splash screen of the Allegro 2000 so it's found the right model. And again, we wait for a minute. And another minute. And here we are in Hawaii, but with a different aircraft this time. Now, the thing I want to do quickly here is just push H, and this brings on a heads up display, uh, which will be useful in a moment for just checking that my interfacing is working okay. Now, I'm gonna go back to my terminal and press Control Shift T, so I get a new terminal window. Uh, ignore all the nonsense at the top, that's a configuration problem on my laptop. And what I'm going to do now is run a little test script. 
uh, in Python this time. So Python, and I'm using Python 3, so I have to type Python 3 all the time. Uh, don't worry about that, it's still Python, it's just a, a, a few slightly improved capabilities. And then the thing I'm going to use is called testinterface.py. So this is a special script I've given you already, and it just makes sure that everything works. So I run this, and the first thing I can see is a bunch of numbers coming through. Well, this is a good sign. What the script does under the hood is that it just reads the vertical speed of the aircraft. Well, the aircraft's on the ground, so it's not going anywhere. But of course, it's not perfectly still, and so it's giving me some jitter. That's fine. The other thing to check is that if I go back to this window over here, which is slightly cryptic to look at with that little uh, no entry sign, but actually this is the aircraft simulator, and have a look at this little bar here, the little thing over on the left middle side of the screen, and that's the elevator moving up and down, which is coming in from my test script. So if I can see the numbers going past in the window, and I can see the elevator going up and down, then I'm comfortable at this stage that my interface with flight gear is working. Good, right, back to that window and kill that test script. Before I move on to an actual flight, there's one final test for me to do. I'm going to run Python 3 fgplot.py, and this should plot the last set of data that was exchanged between the Python interface and the simulator. Here it is. On the top there is the vertical speed. You'll notice that that was bouncing around as driven by the elevator. Uh, not by very much, but it just seemed to be making a tiny difference. And on the bottom there, you can see that signal that I was sending to the elevator that was making it go up and down. Incidentally, I haven't told you what an elevator is. That's a big assumption. Elevator is a control surface at the back of the aircraft. And essentially, you, uh, you, 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 you point it upwards and it pushes the back of the plane down, so you go up. Or you point it downwards and it pushes the back of the plane up, and then your nose is pointing down. So it's just how we control our up and down motion. We don't really need to know a lot about aerospace to make this work. So, if I'm getting that pattern out, my tests have worked, and I can kill that, and I'm ready to start a flight. Let's go back to flight gear. Now the first thing to do is to push 5 in your numerical keypad. And that makes sure that all of the controls are centered. Um, otherwise, you might have accidentally left things uh, skew if. Now, I don't need you to learn how to fly, that's not what we're here for, but I do need to get the thing in the air for it to do anything interesting, and it's quicker for me to show you how to do it by hand than to provide an automated script. So, listen carefully. The first thing I'm going to do is press the right-facing curly brace three times, and you'll hear clicks. And that, believe it or not, is the simulation of us turning on the ignition in our plane. The next thing I want you to do is go and have a look over here at the throttle. That's the indicator for the throttle command, and I'm going to push 9 on my numeric keypad just to get up 3 quarters of the way. And that'll mean that when we get airborne, things will happen quickly. I'm going to push S now to start the engine, and then in very quick succession I'm going to press Shift and B to take the parking brake off. And we're off. Now, don't worry about the runway. That's you know, it, it means a lot to aerospace, but it doesn't mean a lot to us. We just wait for the airspeed to get up, and when it gets to about 50, push the down arrow three times, and we're in the air. Now, this all looks a bit panicky, but don't worry about it. Press F11, and we'll turn the autopilot on. Vertical speed, zero. Heading bug zero, so we head north. I told you it was a forgiving aircraft. So what you should see is our altitude will stabilize as the vertical speed hold kicks in. And our heading will converge around about to zero, so we're heading north. Okay, now, one more thing. Apologies for messing around, but now, once you've stabilized, I wanted you to change that heading in there to say 180 and hit enter. The reason I'm doing that is because when we come to mess around with heading control, if we make changes around north, we'll suddenly find that we've gone from being zero out to 360 out because of angle wrap around. Whereas if I just do it around 180, 
things are going to be much more reliable. In short, never ever work with angles, but for this way, we'll just cut it out as a problem. So that's us flying around Hawaii. If at any point you're interfacing with this and you want to stop things so you have a breather, just press P and the simulation is on pause. And when you're ready to start again, press P to get going again. And it's that simple. Happy flying.